So first, before sending Rupa and Sanatan to Vrindavan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent Lokanath Goswami to Vrindavan. And uh, <coughs> Lokanath Goswami then was hoping to meet up with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu basically wanted to develop Vrindavan. And he wanted to develop here another another type of movement than in Bengal. In Bengal, Lord Nichananda had started preaching by Kirtan. And his Kirtans, of course, are described as extraordinary. Kirtans that would never end. Kirtans that would sweep up whole villages who disappeared in the Kirtan. Kirtans where old men started to dance and jumped into trees and started dancing on the branches, even on the thin branches, and the branches didn't break. Kirtans where young boys were chanting for one month non-stop and did not eat or drink. And after 30 days, they ripped trees out of the ground. So, in this way, one can read in Chaitanya Bhagavat. So, they were definitely ecstatic devotees. There was no doubt about that. Uh, the kirtans that were happening there were of another, another dimension. Um, but, the kirtans would attract all kinds of people from all kinds of background. And philosophically, not necessarily was everyone understanding the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in that way, uh, the Bengali Vaishnav movement was initially a little wild and not so disciplined. Yeah. Then, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started to send devotees to Vrindavan with the idea to, in Vrindavan, create holy places, to create a hub for his movement. Huh. Basically, at the time, Vindavan was mostly overgrown forest. And here, the town of Vindavan, this is now difficult to believe, but it was all forest 500 years ago, no buildings at all. And really, it, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first sent Lokanath Goswami. But then Lokanath Goswami felt great separation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he tried to meet him when he heard that Mahaprabhu was traveling to Prayag, then he had a desire to meet him there, but each time he tried, because they were traveling on foot and communication was poor, he missed him all the time. Each time he came to the place, Mahaprabhu had already left. So in this way, it was <coughs> difficult. Um, Lokanath Goswami, though, remained here, and returned to Vrindavan and one of the other early associates of Lokanath Goswami is Bhugarva Goswami. The birthplace of uh, Lokanath Goswami is not far from the birthplace of Rupa and Sanatan, now in East Bengal. Um, Lokanath Goswami was very strict and he would not allow any of the biographers to really write about him. Yeah? He told Krishnadas Kaviras Goswami to not include him in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So he's not there and we also are finding very little, find a little bit in the Bhakti Ratnakar. Um, and of course, Nara Tamji Las, which gives us some. Uh, background about Narita. I am sitting facing the Samadhi of Lokanath Goswami and then some of you are sitting right next to Sila Narita Das Thakur Samadhi and here the little sandstone one is Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur Samadhi. So we're looking here at 
a number of very important generations of Vaishnavas. Um, it is said inside we saw uh, that there is the the Govardhan Shiva, Krishnadas, Kaviraj, Goswami. Uh, there, is, there are the deities of Baladev Vichabhusan, who was the follower of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, next generation, so Vijay Govinda, and you saw maybe the red rings around the eyes of Vijay Govinda. You could see how Radharani looks a little dazed. If you haven't seen it, you can go back in, have a good look again. Look at the hypnotic look of Govinda, and, look, and Radharani looks like right. Uh, so here in those deities definitely Krishna is in control uh, that may may change from situation to situation uh, sometimes she is in control so this place is obviously um, very close to us uh, every day we're chanting Guru Vastakam which is written by Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. We're chanting Guru Vandanam, Si Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhagati Satma, which is written by Narathanda Thakur. They are every day in our lives. Uh, they're part of our everyday devotional practice. So these Acharyas are very, very uh, important to us and we are here um, at their samadhis. Um, it is said when we pray to the samadhis of the acharyas, uh, then they have completed their uh, their activities on the in this world. They have fully manifested their spiritual potency, and therefore. Uh, these disappearance places are in one sense more important even than the appearance places. Uh, um, at the same time, it is also uh, a sobering reality uh, that we have to take full advantage of this movement and of the senior Vaishnavas that are there. Now, also in our movement, so many senior Vaishnavas are available. And, uh, but obviously, that will not continue. Uh, one disciple of Prabhupada, uh, who's also from Holland, named Paravita Prabhu, is an, uh, is an artist and he makes songs. And he wrote one song which I liked, and that is like, the song was the last Prabhupada disciple on earth. <laughs> and, and he was it then, you know, and he's saying, why me? <laughs> he's singing this song, he says, Krishna, why me? How could I become the last Prabhupada disciple? I'm totally not qualified to represent all these Prabhupada disciples. And he made a good point, you know, the last Prabhupada disciple on earth. Um, yeah, that day uh, will come one day. And, and yet, um, the caravan continues. Um, sometimes a caravan is a long procession of many generations of Vaishnavas who are all continuing. And in front, the Panchatattva are dancing. And around them, the six Goswamis. And connected to them, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami. And then uh, Lokanath Goswami is also there along with Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami. Following Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami is Narathanda Thakur as a Siksha follower. Following him is Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Following him is Baladevi Jibusa. In this way we see how each time the, uh, the authority shifts. Uh, when we look at the dates of the uh, lives of the Goswamis, then we can also see that uh, Rupa and Sanatan, they appeared 
somewhere, it is thought somewhere in the, 14, in the late 1480s. Some say 1488, 1489, others say a little earlier. Uh, and they are supposed to have left around 1554 and the years around there, right? And then we see that after that, Raghunadas is becoming prominent. And that like up to 1576, it's Raghunadas who is the main leader of the, of the uh, Vaishnava Acharyas. And then we see how it becomes Jiva Goswami. And then Jiva Goswami takes over. And we see that Krishna's Kaviraj is still, still alive because he got very old and he finished the Chaitanya Charitamrita in 1615. So that is like, where he supposedly appeared around 1520 right? and lived till 1615. So, uh, where does Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lived from 1486 till, uh, till 1533. Um, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became 48 years old. And then you work, if you do the calculations, 48 years, 1486 plus 48 would make 1534. But the way they count birthdays in India is different than in the West. Because in India, from zero to one, to your first birthday, you're one year old. And after your first birthday, you're in your second year, therefore you're two. You're two, you see? Yeah, yeah. in your second year, so you're two. And this whole year, you're two. And then when your second year is complete, then you're, yeah, then three begins. So, like, where's the Western way of counting, you know, is different. Uh, when two years are complete, then you are two for the whole year, right? So it's uh, therefore Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left in 1533. Uh, so we can see how the Sankirtan movement, how the leadership shifted from one to the other. Uh, and in one sense here, in this temple, we see these generations represented. And that is... is uh, very significant. Uh, therefore, I begin to talk about generations and parampara and succession and how everything goes on because we see all these generations of, of Vaishnavas represented here in this Ravikokulananda temple. It's a very peaceful place. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, that's usually That's why this is a good place for some discussion, some meditation, because it's rare to find a quiet place in Vrindavan. Right? All we hear is birds, no motorcycles, no nothing. Right? Here, just, just some parrots. And there's a good monkey cage, so even the monkeys have given up. Right? They're not even here to make trouble. Because they have noticed it doesn't work. This cage, this cage is soft. Now, having said that, let's see. Probably one will come and show. You know, <laughs> but so far, so good. Uh, so it is these personalities in this particular uh, place are part of the Goswami school. Huh? We went to the Samadhis of Rupa and uh, Rupa Sanatan or Rupa Goswami Samadhi. We went. Uh, we didn't go to Sanatan Goswami's. Uh, we walked past it as we turned at Kaliyadaha. But on top of the hill just after Kaliyadaha is actually the Samadhi from Sanatan Goswami on the hill which is like the most important thing on the hill today because the deities are no longer the original deities of Sanatana Goswami. They are now in Rajasthan, in Karoli. Um, so one can go there also alone, but when you go up there, don't forget to go to the little uh, Samadhi on the side. And uh, so in this, then we 
We had the Samadhi of Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami there in, and the Samadhi of Jiva Goswami in the Radha temple. So today we are connecting with our, our Acharyas, um, who, all, who all spent their lives in pushing forward this movement. Um, and that, of course, uh, that's why they are remembered. Um, so many other Vaishnavas were there. But they may not have done so much to push forward this movement. So although they also received the benefit of this movement, although they were also blessed, they did not get the same importance. It is particularly the Acharyas who did something to push forward the movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They are remembered. Um, when we are remembering the disciplic succession, there are so many names, so many lines. Uh, we can see that now also. Um, we can see how there are, uh, from Prabhupada, so many different lines. Uh, you can draw so many lines of disciplic succession via this guru, via that guru, and then, you know, now it's come already like a few generations, but in my case, right, from Prabhupada to Jayadrita Swami to, to me, and then after me it will spread out to all of you. you know? So many of you will also, should also come forward and should also uh, take full responsibility to push on this movement. Um, some of the men should take sannyas. No one ever thought that Prabhupada would take sannyas. That was not expected. Right? Not that nice Mr. Day. That him. Nah. He's a pharmacist. Businessman, actually. Yeah? He is like very nice. He plays nice Madanga, but you know, it's like, you know, he's, he's, he's a worldly man. He's a, he's a businessman. He's not like, 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 like one of the sannyasis. There were so many sannyasis. So they all looked at yes. He's a donor. He gives nice donations. He plays nice madanga. He never says no. When we go to his shop, he always gives. Yes, they thought. And they thought that was him. They were surprised when suddenly that personality emerged as the most successful acharya. How is it possible? I mean, some of them just couldn't digest it. It does not. This cannot be. How can this be? How is it possible that he, this day, you know, no, I cannot be as you said. Then he took initiation from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, who mercifully gave it to that householder. And then he was so restless, right? You know, they told him just serve in the mat, right? Just serve, do some service in the temple. But no, he all the time wanted to go to the west, yeah? He was serving in Delhi temple at one point and he wanted to go to the west and they told him, Abai, just focus on your service. Abai, don't be so restless. Abai, just do your service and do the, do the newsletter, you know, of the, of the mat. You're a, you're a good writer, see the, huh? see the Guru Dev liked your writing, so you write the newsletter. Be, sad, be humble, be satisfied. No. My spiritual master wanted me to preach in the Western world. He did that, right? So everyone was so surprised, so surprised. So who knows who will be, uh, who will come forward in the future? Who knows? We will see. Um, but surely in every generation, um, in every generation Vaishnavas come forward in every generation, Krishna is is bringing out the uh, the same knowledge. Te sam evanu kam partam aham agyana jam tamaha nasiyami at babavastu gyana dipena basvata. Krishna from within reveals transcendental knowledge where it is needed. Uh, if somehow or other the, the great Acharyas leave, then what do we do? But then others come forward. And others will come. And, and so, your turn is also coming. Yeah? 
not only to leave, but to do something, to take leadership of this movement. That is what is required. Um, but then we have to be qualified. It's not just... Then we have to make a great endeavor. So then we should really try now to be qualified. Um, so here we are, uh, knowing that we are not so qualified, but praying to become qualified. Uh, here at the feet of the Acharyas, we simply try to learn. Learn from their example, learn from their writings, um, learn from how they lived. Um, in that way, we can uh, we can begin. So the early Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya began in West Bengal uh, by the preaching of Lord Nichananda, because Lord Chaitanya had stayed in Puri and he had sent Nichananda to Bengal. And there the movement spread, so many followers. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent the Goswamis to Vrindavan. And the Goswamis, they were thoroughly instructed in the philosophy. He met them at the Sastramedha God, Rupa First he met Rupa Goswami, then he met Sanatana Goswami. And when they went to Vrindavan, then really what happened was, um, they started to write many books. So then we got a whole the philosophical side of our movement. So even today, it is still very much like that, that Bengal is the place of ecstatic kirtan, ecstatic chanting, and then Vrindavan is more the place of the grantas. Uh, here we have granta samaris, the place of the books, the place where the Goswamis established philosophy. So both of these uh, are required. Uh, we need to be philosophically deep, and we need to also have the ecstatic kirtan. So, from the Goswami school, eventually uh, the books were sent to Bengal. Uh, they said Naratam and Srinivas, they were younger, younger, and they were of a later generation. So, they were still coming to Vrindavan when Jiva Goswami was present. And at the time of Jiva Goswami, they received training in the, uh, in the conclusions as the Goswamis had been teaching it. And then after that, they, uh, Jiva Goswami sent them with the books to Bengal. Shamananda was also there. Uh, we went to the Shamananda temple, all right? It was a little restless and busy with a lot of loudspeakers and noise, so... We couldn't really... I went there in July and it was very nice and peaceful. And now it was in Kartik time, it's a little intense. So we went there quickly and out quickly. But still, we went there to that temple. And Shamananda was the third person. Huh? Shamananda, somehow or other, uh, was the disciple of Ridai Chaitanya in, uh, in, in Bengal. Ridai Chaitanya he was a disciple uh, of Goridas Pandit, and it said Goridas had deities that were exact replicas of Chait of Gorni time. And what happened was that in their house, in his house, Gorni Thai also came. So there were two Gors and two Nitais, one on the altar, and one set on the altar, and one set on the in the kirtan. So then. Uh, Goridas said, oh, please stay, please stay. And then they said, but we are already there. So, please stay. He said, no, no, that's not the same. Please stay. Then the deities jumped off the altar. And then there were like two gores and two nitais in the kirtan. And then they said, which, which one would you like to stay? Two of us will stay and two of us will go. So Goridas didn't know, he looked and he didn't know and couldn't see any difference. So he said, well, uh, these two. Now, then the deities went on the, back on the altar. But since that time, those deities, they were not behaving so well. They were regularly coming off the altar, really. And they were everywhere. So therefore, Goridas 
he stood there with a with a stick at the side, just in case. Now I said, you know, today they jump off the altar and tomorrow they're out the door. You know, so just in case, he had a stick ready and uh, yes, chasing, ready to chase them back. So on one occasion they did it again. They jumped off the altar and Gori Das brought the stick and went after them. And, and Gori Tai ran as fast as they could. And then they jumped into the heart of Chaitanya Das, who was the disciple of Gori. And from that day on, Chaitanya Das became Vidai Chaitanya because in his heart Gorni Thai were residing. So it said Vidai Chaitanya was in the mood of Sakya Ras. He was in the mood of, in the cowherd boy mood. Anyway, Shamananda was his disciple and he had a different name also at the time, uh, Dukhi Krishna Das. And Shamananda came here to Vrindavan and in Vrindavan, he found some bangle or uh, some ankle, something like, I think it was ankle bells. Anyway, he found that and then they were extraordinary. So when he found them, he immediately realized these are not ordinary, these are transcendental. So he wanted to give them to the owner. One day, one girl came and asked for the... Uh, for those, uh, how you call them, these ankle bells. But then Shamananda said, no, I can, uh, I can only return them to the owner. Anyway, so it turned out the owner was Srimata Radharani. So somehow or other, he got to see Radharani and then he got a, 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 a tilak stamp on his head and he was also given a new name, Shamananda. So then his guru became very angry. You know, how he thought that Jiva Goswami had given him the name. And so he was angry with Jiva Goswami, you reinitiated my disciple. But he said, no, I, I didn't give him that name. He just. And then it all came out that Radharani gave the name and that she gave him Tilak, which wouldn't disappear. So he really had this Tilak stamp on his forehead. So anyway, later then, so Shamananda was the third person. There was Narata, there was Srinivas, and they both were studying under the, under the Goswami and very learned in the philosophy. So they did not just go with the books to Bengal, they were also qualified to explain them. So they were the first Sankirtan party to go out on book distribution, but they also knew the books very well, so they could teach them. So when they went to Bengal, then of course there was that Raja Vira Hamsa, the king, who had an astrologer, and the astrologer was saying, oh, three men accompanied by servants will, are traveling down the road, and they are carrying the greatest treasure. According to the stars, it says the greatest treasure. So the king was interested. So the king arranged for them to be robbed and to steal that treasure. Then the king opened the, the trunks and found the, the, the books of the Goswami. So he's reading these books. And as he was reading them, his heart changed and he became really overwhelmed. He couldn't stop. And then he felt guilty. So he sent messengers to bring back Srinivas. When the books were stolen, then Naratam decided to go to Kateri, which was his original place in uh, in what is now Bangladesh, on the northern side of Bangladesh, on the uh, on the west, near Raj Sahi, is Kateri, the, the place of Naratam. And Naratam, he was there, he went there to his home, and Shamananda, he also left and he went to preach in Orissa. Yeah. As Shamananda was preaching, he was very successful and Shamananda in due course of time made a disciple named Rasikananda and Rasikananda was also a very ecstatic devotee. So we saw in the Radha Shama Sundra temple, we saw deities uh, very quickly and off to the side there was also Rasikananda. Uh, it went very fast, so we may not have noticed but if you go back 
on a more quiet day you can see there's even some cave somewhere under there where Raghasikananda was sitting and on a quiet day you can also go there. Uh, uh, meanwhile, when Rajavira Hamsa had a change of heart, he had Srinivas brought before him. And the king asked for forgiveness and which, uh, which Srinivas did and then Srinivas initiated the king. And then, after initiating the king, Srinivas sent news to both Naratam and Shamananda that the books had been found. And he ordered the king to make many copies of the manuscripts. He also sent copies then to Naratam. And Naratam had many copies made by Brahmanas, handwritten copies, in, uh, in catering. And then, Shamananda went to the king in Orissa, and he also arranged for many copies. Then they brought all these copies of the Goswami books back to Kateri. And in Kateri, they had the first disappearance festival for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then all the Bengali devotees came. And it was an amazing event because it is said, Achutananda, who was like a small boy at the time of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was now uh, a mature person. He was the son of uh, Advaita Acharya. He was leading a big party from Bengal to Kateri. And Janava Mata, she was the oldest and she was the wife of Nichananda and she was the most respected of all the Vaishnavas and she was honored and Janava Mata had before been taken to Vrindavan and Janava Mata had heard the instructions from about the Goswami literature from Rupa Goswami himself. So she had heard explanations of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu from Rupa Goswami. So in this way, Janava Mata was also an authority on the books of the six Goswamis. He knew them very well because he had the proper explanation. So then this festival was organized. And in this Kateri festival, it was an amazing thing. Because at that time, what they did, they installed six sets of deities in Kateri. So that Kateri would become a place where devotees would go to visit the deities. One set of deities are in Vrindavan, they're known as Vraj Mohan. Huh? They're here. Uh, the others are in various places and difficult to trace because some of those deities are never kept in a fixed place. They keep on moving. So it's hard to find them. And we are looking. But Raj Mohan is here in Vrindavan. And what happened then? So they installed the deities and everyone who came to the festival got a, got a set of books. And Janava Mata was there to, to state that these books are authorized. This is the proper understanding. So immediately, as, the, as everyone got the books, immediately the Goswami teachings became the standard. Whereas before, that, that was not the standard. So it, it was like a huge change. And even now, in the Royal Asiatic Society in Calcutta, they have thousands of these manuscripts from Kateri, from that festival. Uh, thousands they have found. And still so many other thousands maybe somewhere else. So it was a huge thing. That Kateri festival was a very powerful event which united the Vaishnavas from Vrindavan with the Vaishnavas from Bengal and brought the Goswami conclusion to Bengal. And all of Bengal now took it. Huh? And then Krishnadas Kaviraj came as a representative from the Goswami school with the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And it said the Chaitanya Charitamrita became the final word. It became the ultimate authoritative book on all, uh, on all Vaishnav philosophy. That was the book. That was the final book on the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it was considered so authoritative and important that the book was enshrined in temples. And you have, still today in Bengal, temples dedicated to the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It became the most prominent literature. So, in this way, the Ghost Krishnadas Kaviraj was also a representative of the Goswamis. 
um, we went to the place where he wrote Chaitanya Charitamrita in Radha Kund. And we remember that in this way, Krishna does. Krishna does brought everything together. He took it from everywhere, from the Goswamis, he took it from Jiva Goswami Sandarbas, he took it from all the authoritative sources, from Bhakti Rasamita Sindhu, from Hari Bhakti Vilas, everywhere he took the authoritative knowledge and put it all in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So in that way, it is the last word. Mm. And then, Naratam, after the disappearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there in Ketri, Naratam, he introduced this Kirtan in this Drupad style and with very slow, long, drawn out notes uh, with alaps and everything and it was a very emotional type of Kirtan. And it is described in the Bhakti Ratnakar that as Naratam was singing in the Ketri festival, and all the devotees just became overwhelmed by the kirtan and then everyone saw the panchatattva and the panchatattva was there in the kirtan and the panchatattva was dancing in the kirtan and everyone saw and then the panchatattva disappeared and then everyone cried and they cried so many tears that the entire ground became muddy that's how it was that's the Ketri festival so this Ketri festival is a, is a historic milestone uh, in our tradition. It was there where East, East and West, where the Bengali Vaishnavas and the Vrindavan Vaishnavas became united. And, and such uh, is our movement. Therefore, we are still, uh, still Within these, within these two dams, Mayapur and Vindavan, and the third dam, uh, Jagannath Puri, where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stayed for so long. So it is in these three dams that the movement of Lord Chaitanya is particularly enshrined. It is there that the movement took its, took its form. Huh? We're looking at the movement in its earlier stages and it's gradually taking shape. So, uh, and it's, and of course, Srila Prabhupada started to translate the same books from the Goswamis. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Nectar of Devotion. Upadhyay Samrita, Nectar of Instruction. Huh? So those very same books that they got at Kateri, we got them too. Huh? Prabhupada gave them to us. Prabhupada knew, obviously, everything about the importance of those particular books. And he just gave it all. And, and the same thing, uh, in the beginning, uh, he just started with Kirtan. Matchless gift, Tonkin Square Park, sit under the tree, chant Hare Krishna. Nobody knew what was going on. Uh, I mean, we read how, how the first installation from New York, it went to Hate ashbury San Francisco. Uh, when you're going to San Francisco, be sure to wear a flower in your hair. Oh yeah, flower power, hippie days, all sunglasses and too many drugs. What can we say, you know? Uh, in the midst of all that confusion, uh, the devotees were there and feeding so many devotees and it was all kirtan and not so much philosophy. When Prabhupada installed Lord Jagannath, he told the devotees to have a candle on a tray and to just light it and move it around in circles. And I agreed and said, wow, that is nice. Is there more? And Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, if I would tell you, you would faint. Yeah? So, so much more. All the deity worship, the whole Pancharatrika, no idea of all these things. Prabhupada just started a movement, just like Lord Nityananda. Just bringing everybody in, kirtans and, and lectures that were way over their head. But gradually, uh, he began to give it shape. Uh, and the same thing, gradually bringing in the books of the Goswamis, gradually bringing in the Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita. And, and, and Iskand is still maturing. Uh, we are still maturing today. 
now we have so much more knowledge. Even the average devotee knows so much more now than even the senior devotees did in, in the 60s yeah? and early 70s. They, you know, they didn't have all those books. Uh, even when I joined, which is late, 78, so many books were not there. Yes, the Bhagavatam was translated. Yes, CC was translated. But many, many books were not translated. And then little by little, some books came out. The Prabhupada Leelam Rita started to come out part by part. Not all in one book. I would buy it straight away. Then little Prabhupada Nectar books would come out. I already paid in advance before they came out, you know. Just like, we got to get all these things. Eager. For the first time, all these books were coming. We had to grab it, right? That's how it was. Now, you know, information overload, overload, overload. How can I read all this? Now it's like, can anyone read all this? Is it possible, you know? I mean, now too, many, too much, but in the beginning, it wasn't like that. When I joined, it wasn't like that. There were two sets of Prabhupada's letters, one in Prabhupada's house in Vrindavan and one in Los Angeles with the BBT. That was it. Every day now, still a letter on Prabhupada's desk, you can read, right? Now it's just, you know, okay, letter of Prabhupada, you know, I mean, you can read it on the internet as well, right? I mean, Prabhupada's letters, you know, got them on my phone, got them everywhere. But then, you know, only there, we had them in Prabhupada's house, it was, no one had read them, very few people. I was temple president, hey, you know, take the letters and read them all, right? Special privilege, make photocopies, yes, as president you can, take advantage of your position. So I found a personal set, hey, that was something else because no one had. Only later, these things were published in books. Conversations came out in, in 37 volumes, we never had those things, nothing, we didn't have all that, it all came out. So, so, that is my point. Little by little, huh, everything became available. That's how it happened when Prabhupada came to the West, and it happened in the same way when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in, in Bengal and in, in India. And here we are at the place, today we have visited the architects of this movement. We are Rupa Nugas. We stood there at Rupa Goswami's uh, Bhajan Kutir and his Samadhi. These are the architects, these are the ones that have created this movement uh, as it is today. So in this way, <coughs> we are here today on our Parikrama sort of understanding a little bit more of the history we're part of, of the contribution of the Acharyas. Then we can go from Vrindavan to Mayapur. And it is said that Srila Gorga Babaji was seated in Mayapur and chanting Japa. And suddenly he took up a stick and he was just ah! And there's nobody there. So what's going on now? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a goat. <laughs> There was a goat here in Vrindavan eating a tulsi plant just in front of the samadhis of the Goswamis. And although Srila Gorka Sodas Babaji was in Mayapur, he said, huh? Thank you very much. Yes. So, in this way, uh, our transcendental acharyas are just operating on the spiritual platform and and we are just uh, we are just harvesting the fruits so we can go to Mayapur and in Mayapur we have the more recent history there we can go to the house of Bhaktivinoda Thakur 
We can go to the Chaitanya Mart, where is the place of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who fought to establish that anybody from any background can become a, an initiated Vaishnava. He fought for that, otherwise it would not have happened. They would have rejected us. But Bhakti Siddhanta fought for it and he was powerful. They couldn't stop him. So it's because of, that is Nectar of Devotion, chapter 5, explaining the contribution of, of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. So in Mayapur, in the house of Bhakti Thakur, sometimes four Acharyas came together in that house. Four. Srila Jagannanas Babaji. Sila Bhakti Vinotaku, Sila Kurkasodas Babaji, and Sila Bhakti Siddhanta. All together in that house there. The four pictures on the altar. All sitting there on the balcony. Yeah. Looking at the birth side of Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. So, this is all the history of our movement. And such history is obviously very valuable um, because we understand better what we're part of, and how we are living by the contributions of the Vaishnavas. Then, when Srila Prabhupada started, he did so much, and we're living by the contribution of Srila Prabhupada. Uh, his rooms in Radha Damodar, we were there. Prabhupada wanted not only one room, there were 14 rooms there. At one point, I almost bought them. Almost, but somehow or other there was a legal glitch that it would have come, become an endless court case. I couldn't do it. I had the money, I had the, the Goswami in agreement, everything was ready to go, but the lawyers didn't sign off on it. Said, no, it, it will. There are claims on it. So we couldn't buy it. But Prabhupada wanted a yoga vidya pit there. Right next to Seva Kunj, um, Radha Namana Temple is next to Seva Kunj, the place where Ras Lila takes place. And right there was Jiva Goswami's place. In Jiva Goswami's place, there, so many amazing things. They had, uh, they put all the land in the name of the deities. In India you can do that, it's called Devata's ship. You can make arrangements, the deity becomes the owner of the land. So the whole area was the owner of the land. Even where the Krishna Balaraman there is, that was the Radha Raman Bagicha. That land was the gardens of Radha Raman. They were there. So somewhere now, 90 years ago, that was changed by some law that they could like, you know, start to privatize that ownership. Uh, so. The Goswamis were not just chanting Japa. The Goswamis were also establishing holy places. The Goswamis were also making arrangements. They, their signatures, their original signatures are on the land documents. They are now mostly found in the Vrindavan Research Institute, which is just a, a stone throw away from our temple, if you are good at throwing stones. And, uh, uh, it is close. So, of course, you need to read some Sanskrit, you know, to figure it all out. But if you take an expert with you, you can actually see those original manuscripts there. So, in this way, the history of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas is still alive here. That history has created our foundation. And, and we are part of that. And then I was saying we go to Mayapur, more recent history then Prabhupada history, and then the history of Prabhupada's disciples. Huh? Just like here, if you were there on Srila Prabhupada's disappearance festival, the first devotee to speak was Guru Kripa. Huh? Who was the sannyasi at the time of Prabhupada? And Prabhupada made him the GBC for Vrindavan. And Guru Kripa was a tough dude. He is a tough dude. He is always tough. Uh, Guru Kripa, when Prabhupada said that he wanted his temple in Vrindavan, Guru Kripa agreed to bring the money. And it was tough. And uh, one time Hari Kesh was the secretary and, uh, of Prabhupada. And I don't know exactly where it was, I forgot. But 
uh, Prophet was staying in a room upstairs and Hari stood at the top of the stairs and said to Guru Kripa, you can't see Prabhupada now, right? And Guru Kripa said, get out of the way or I'll throw you down the stairs. <laughs> and he went, you know, so Hari okay, got out of the way. And then he went into Prabhupada's room and then Prabhupada said, Ah, oh, Guru Kripa, <laughs> I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> so then Guru Kripa looked back at Hari Kesh said, Who are you? you know. <laughs> but somehow or other, so Guru Kripa spoke first. And I remember that Guru Kripa said on this uh, disappearance day of Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada was here so short. He was here just for a very short time, but he was here like a flash of lightning. So intense, like lightning. Such powerful energy. And everything got lit up and everything got surcharged with transcendental energy, like a flash of lightning. Oh, so, so Prabhupada did that. And then his disciples did so many things. It is because of Guru Kripa that we are walking around in the Krishna Balaram Mandir. Oh, such a nice temple. He paid for it. He collected it with his men from Japan. Huh? So, yes, he went to Japan. And the Japanese people, they paid. So you can say, well, we paid for the temple. <laughs> Sometimes Guru Kripa's collection was a little bit... Uh, yeah. <laughs> But whatever it was, but they did it, they did it. So, so many devotees have done so much service and we are harvesting the fruits of that service. And now it is our turn to do so much service and the future generations will harvest the fruits from our service. I don't know how, but I had the good fortune to be involved in the construction of Prabhupada Samadhi and to coordinate that that building and it was austere and as I was doing it I didn't like it but now at least okay I made a contribution something so now you also uh, also do something uh, to uh, to make this movement history to increase the history of this movement just as all these acharyas have increased the history of this movement now let us do something to increase the history of this movement. Okay, I am finished. Done. I am going to uh, end the Parikrama here. I'm not going back on the Harinam. You can go if you want to. I'm going to get your rickshaw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's... Uh, and a little early today, that's, that sounds like a good idea. Uh, it's been uh, <coughs> parikramas every day. Uh, but I hope you appreciate where we are. Uh, every day we go out from Vindavan, but we're actually here in Vindavan, and there's so much more. But I've reached my limit, you know, in terms of, uh, of what I can offer today. So I'll end with this. Um, those of you who are like the diehards, you know, can go on and write a Gopinath, can go to Bansivat, can go to Imnitala, can go to so many places, right? And just, just rolling the dust everywhere and pray. And you have my blessings. <laughs> my blessings are with you every step of the way. And if you, and if you go to Vindavan and you dance all the way back on Ayana, my blessings are also with you. But if you're a little older and you go back in a rickshaw, my blessings are in the rickshaw as well. <laughs> uh, so, that, don't worry. Uh, we wish you uh, a happy day in Vindavan, absorbed in hearing, chanting and remembering. And, uh, I'll see you again tomorrow for our final day. And, and, uh, 
because it's a little far tomorrow if you're really there at seven instead of like and just get ready to go i'll also come at seven tomorrow no? because i know it's a bit further otherwise it's getting so late again so if you could leave at seven that would be great right, and then we end our parikramas our vindavan meditations and then um, you know, so many thoughts, so many things to reflect, so much dust we got. <laughs> Very auspicious. Vraj Duli, dust from Vindavan. We got <clears throat> holy waters from everywhere. We got um, food for thought. We got mercy. We got mercy from the Dham, mercy from the Vaishnavas. We got purified. Uh, this way or that way, Vindavan is sweet and Vindavan is also heavy, uh, soft like a rose. Uh, and Vajrat Apikatura and heart like a thunderbolt, both sometimes intense. But whatever the Dham, whatever may happen in the Dham, whether in the Dham will be so inspired or whether in the dawn we were, we were sick and lying on bed. It is all the mercy of Krishna. Because in Vrindavan we are on the lap of Krishna. And Krishna, he will give us very direct purification. Very direct responses to whatever is going on. So, we're fortunate. Here, Krishna is especially close. So, uh, And we are here to come back. Uh, that is for sure. Wherever we've gone on this Parikrama, let it be a first acquaintance, a second or third, but let us go back again and again to deepen our relationship with the Dham and through the Dham with Krishna. And, and to see how here in Vrindavan Srila Prabhupada is the unique personality. In his room in Radha Dhammada, Prabhupada had that appearance of Rupa and Sanatan who came and who personally instructed him how to spread Krishna consciousness. Uh, who is Prabhupada? How can we understand Prabhupada? Uh, Bhavananda told us, Bhavananda Prabhu told us that one day Prabhupada said to him that I was in the spiritual world and Krishna asked me to come to the material world to spread Krishna consciousness. And, and Prabhupada said, I said to Krishna, oh no, no, I, I don't like, I don't want to go. I don't like austerity. And Krishna said, no, don't worry, don't worry. There will be no austerity. All you have to do, you write books and I will do the rest. <coughs> so, Prabhupada said, like, told Bhavananda like that and said he came to this world and he wrote his books. He said Krishna dictated him. And yeah, Krishna said he did the rest, but Prabhupada did the rest also, so many things. And Krishna helped. Um, so, we can't imagine who Srila Prabhupada is. Um, of course, many devotees have dreams about Prabhupada. And one devotee who had a dream about Prabhupada was Malati. Now, Malati is not just any devotee. Malati is the devotee from the early days who was in Mayapur cooking for Prabhupada. And the treasurer was Bengali. So the Bengalis are tight. Tight with money. That's Bengali. Tight. So the treasurer would give her exact amount to buy vegetables. And then she had to go to the market to buy the vegetables. But she's a foreigner. So for the foreigners all the prices go up, you know? So it was really so then she had to fight and fight and fight to get all the boga, right? And somehow or other she got it. And then she was cooking and she had to cook on this coal stove and this and that. It was extremely difficult. 
you know, to get the fire going and to be ready in time to get the proper heat wasn't easy at all. Somehow or other she cooked for Prabhupada. Then one day Prabhupada said, tomorrow my god brothers are coming. And all the sannyasis were coming. All the sannyasis were coming. And Prabhupada said she had to cook for all the sannyasis. So she cooked. And they're all coming. And then she had to... There was no one to come and collect the prasada. So the prasada was ready. So she, finally she brought it in. Like a head completely covered. Bringing the prasada. And Prabhupada then said, as she walked in, in front of all those sannyasis, she was Prabhupada's god brother, she was very uh, embarrassed. And Prabhupada then said to his god brothers, he said, Oh, this is Malati. She would do anything for me. She would cut her throat for me. So, and I would do the same for her. And then he said to all her... Uh, to all his god brothers, you know, which is sort of, all, who were all sannyasis, and here this this girl, you know, coming in. So that was some something. So Malati had a dream that is like many years ago, but in that dream, she had a dream, and she met the Yamadutas in the dream. But the Yamadutas were very beautiful. But they said they were very beautiful. They looked very nice, and. They said they were the Yamadutas. She said, you're not the Yamadutas. <laughs> you don't look like the Yamadutas at all. And then they said, no, no, we are the Yamadutas. But we are, this is our actual form. We actually have a very beautiful form. But the sinful people, they see us in a very ugly form. And then the Yamadutas said, they said, you don't know. You don't know who your Prabhupada is. You don't know. He said, you should know that the whole universe is worshipping Prabhupada. That was her dream. Now you may say, okay, that's her imagination. I'm not so sure. That might have just been some revelation. And it makes a lot of sense. Anyway. A dream is a dream. Can't argue with that. But what a dream it was. Huh? The whole universe is worshipping Prabhupada. Who is Prabhupada? We don't know. And if you were smart and did what I told you, you put your head on that bed in Radha at the feet because he slept on it. Did you do that? I told the devotees to tell the other devotees to do it. They didn't tell you. You have to go back. <laughs> if you didn't put your head on that bed to get the dust, you better go back. Even with a rickshaw, somehow or other, back to that room and get that dust on your head. I did it. And I told everyone, do it. And tell others to do it. I walked out and I told people, didn't do it. I have to go back. What do you mean? If you missed out. Because that was his real bed. That's the original bed. And of course the big bed in Prabhupada's room is also the bed where he left his body. So there we also do it. There we also put our head at the feet. You just go in there. Go to the bed, bow down, put your head at the feet. Don't be shy, just do it. Uh, these things you have to, should not be shy. We were in Mayapur one time and then suddenly, um, as we're in the Chaitanya Mat, and we come by the gate, then upstairs is Bhakti Siddhanta's rooms. But it's always locked. But I saw the door was open. So I said to the voice, hey, let's go. And we went inside, and there was nobody there. And then there was Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's shoes, and we had a party. Ah, so you, you know, those shoes, you know. Those shoes were dancing on everyone's head, especially on mine. <laughs> I rubbed them all over, wherever you Then we heard some noise from the Pujari. <laughs> 
Behind you is uh, is Lokanath Goswami, Vishnu Chakra. Don't steal anything. It's a garment. It's a garment. Can you break that garment? Well, just carefully you can sort of take off one flower. See? I, you don't know, notice so. oh, it. I try. <laughs> He gives you half, see? It was a big flower. All right, thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shri Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur Ki Jai. Shri Lanarutam Das Thakur Ki Jai. Shri Lokanath Goswami Ki Jai. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami Ki Jai. Shri Maradevich Bhusan Ki Jai. Satka Swami Prabhu Ki Jai Anantakuti Vaishnava Vindhya Jai Oh, glory to the Sabbath Jai